um, to this uh, fireside fireside chat at uh, the Innovation Lab. It's great that uh, so many of you uh, turned up in person, and I know that we also have many uh, participants online. Uh, so uh, first of all, just a quick introduction. Uh, my name is Nora, I'm from uh, the, the iLab, and uh, I have Esther Fabritsky here with me. Uh, Esther is a PhD candidate at uh, CU and also an MBA, and she's doing research, cooperative research, uh, about the Israeli and Hungarian startup ecosystem. Uh, and and uh, uh, the, the star of this fireside uh, chat is Talka Tronta. Thanks a lot for being uh, here with us today. So Tal is what uh, he has established accelerators uh, in Israel and around the world. And he has been helping startups for, uh, for decades. So he has a very extensive experience uh, about, uh, about many different ecosystems. But, I, but the, the one that he knows the best is, of course, the Israeli that we can learn a lot from. So, so Tal, thanks a lot again for coming. Uh, and, um, we have already collected some questions from you, but we would like to keep it like very, uh, very open. So any time that you would like to ask, please raise your raise your hand. Uh, and and maybe we could we could start with uh, with the topic of the the Israeli startup ecosystem. So we all know that uh, that uh, uh, they have a lot to learn from, and that it has become a leader in the international startup ecosystem. And the government is giving like five percent of its of its GDP into the ecosystem, which makes a big difference from what is going on here in Hungary. So how did this come about? Uh, and and what can we learn from this, or how 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 should we, you know, move into that direction? Okay, so, so first of all, hi, shalom to everyone. Um, any Israelis in the crowd here? So I can know how Jewish much I can count. push it. Jewish, <laughs> Jewish, of course, comments. <laughs> um, so thank you for inviting me, and uh, I would love to share with you um, facts numbers, things that you cannot maybe Google and you would like to know. Um, since I'm here as a fireside, you're expected to grill me. <laughs> so this would be best in way of discussion. And I, I would assume that if you made it here today, um, you have something to ask. Okay, we didn't offer lunch, so um, you are not expecting anything. Like in India, they come to events, they come for the lunch. But there will be something. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you knew that but that's secondary. Yeah. So I really want you to um, use the time to, to ask, because you know, it's expected of you um, to come out with something that you wanted to, to be answered. So um, forget the format. We don't have a format. You wanted to know Israel style, that's Israel style. We wing it. We just go as it goes. Um, I don't know how much you know about our ecosystem. If you visited Israel, which of course I invite you to do and spend your money with our economy, not just mine here. It would be very nice of you. Um, Israel, I would say, first of all, to begin with, acceleration or, or, or innovation or incubation of those big names. Well, it all started with probably you all know we are called the startup nation. And why is it? So the first answer people say is that we read somewhere that you wrote the startup nation book. Correct. Second is that we read that per capita, per million, you have the most startups in the world. Well, if there are no Americans here, and I know this is an American university, I can say yes, we are the most. But the question is why? I mean, we're in the same, same size of population. We're nearing, first time we're saying 10 million. We're nearing 10 million. Why are we different? You want to offer something? It's the army. The army. Okay, army. What do you know about our army? Except for being the best in the world, of course. <laughs> <laughs> you have three years together. You have a very strong, you have very strong enemies there. You can say we, it's fine. <laughs> yes. We have strong enemies everywhere, yes, that's true. Um, and as we are pushed for 2,000 years, we had to become smarter. I'm sorry. And, and, and we try to find 
all the figures in my head. You find the Aces. Aces, yes, that's advice. So when you say Israeli army, so what? We have an army. What the so? Technology. Any army, I think, has technology. I think that what you touched on it is that our army develops its technology, part of it, by itself. Think, an army developing its own technology, cyber-wise, I don't know, uh, uh, defense, but this, you know, the big systems are usually done outside by the big companies and with a lot of American money in most cases, because they also use it. But the army decided it was, that was not from first day. In the, in the last years, is that we are going to push forward with development inside. Why do you think the army decided to do that? Safer. Safer. I have a more simple answer for you. Just because, just because the army saw that people just leave the army very quick. And he said, like any employer, I need to keep them here. So... I will offer them a nice job. You want to be a programmer? Good, you can be a programmer in IBM or have your own startup. How about you do it here for me? And we get to enjoy it. It protects the country, so it's good. Everything has a logical explanation. Nothing in your life just happens. You didn't come here today because it just happened to you. So start thinking this way and things kind of will be more logical. So yes, the army is a factor, and the army is a great producer of manpower to the ecosystem. And by that, Israel is considered in one of the first 10 most educated countries in the world, as a fact. As a fact, um, Israeli startups raised $25.4 billion in 2021 when you were all wearing masks and thinking COVID. They worked amazingly. What, we did not have COVID? Of course we had. The world had COVID still. They raised 25 billion. We did over $82 billion of exits. That's 82 unicorns. In March of 2021 alone, Israel gave birth to seven cyber unicorns in a one month. Where were you? (laughs) <laughs> no, you want more? This is what we do. We don't ask for prize. We don't ask you to clap. We just do. Main difference. We do. We don't wait. We don't wait for things to happen. We don't wait to need it. In some cases, we even create the problem <laughs> for the world. And we solve it. Sorry, um, if I don't want to interrupt, just while we're on the army subject, I think it's an interesting thing that uh, there's a specific unit in the army, right? That is uh, is quite popular among the renowned the youth, one, the two hundred one. Uh, yes, and uh, and I heard also that they have a WhatsApp group for sourcing these uh, alumni of this uh, unit of the army for startups. Yeah. However, I also uh, have information that there is an issue of uh, of uh, manpower for startups in Israel. Could you maybe? Go into the connection between the two, how this is going to work out, what you see as the future. So first of all, 8200 is the name of an intelligence unit in Israel. Very renowned. Renowned in a way that if you have graduated that and got released from the army, uh, no one is asking, where did you graduate university? University is not a factor. Although with us, I mean, a bachelor's and a master's is kind of minimum in Israel. We, we, We don't go for less than that. Uh, no one will ask you. Uh, you could be then about 22 to 25 when you get released from the, this unit. And you will start your first day earning somewhere in the neighborhood of 7,000 euros and up. That's your first salary. This is how you start. Don't, don't tell me what's I know what's going on here. So, um, yeah, quite, quite a lot of money. For that matter, all the big internationals are... Um, having their own R&D centers in Israel. Do you know that uh, Microsoft and Intel in Israel is the only location for those companies where decisions on level of cooperate can be taken? Nowhere else in the world 
you will see the CEO of Intel says that Intel is as much an Israeli company as it is American company. This is how deep we go. We're going to grow around you, okay, in a good way. Money, well, we're Jewish. Money is no factor for us. We will always be rich. This is why the world loves us so much uh, from decades, from, from history. Okay, so uh, raising funds in Israel is not that big of a deal. We have more than 8,000 running startups. And going back to the question, so yes, issue of manpower is worldwide. Maybe except of Ukraine, which is near to disappear, okay? Setting how Putin wakes up tomorrow morning. In any case, we also outsource a lot worldwide. We look for manpower. A, because it's very expensive in Israel, and B, because the world is also very talented. We don't own everything in Israel. So those guys who graduate this unit, they will find a job in a heartbeat. They don't actually look for a job. The job looks for them and recruits them. Um, they earn a lot of money, which is just to say that not, they are not for everyone. For sure, not for a startup that doesn't have money, you say Silicon Valley, they don't have money to pay for the taxi to go to the airport, let alone fly to the US, but we don't need because we are another star on the flag anyway. I mean, we raise tons of money from Silicon Valley or for that matter from the US. Um, it's a talent. It's a talent that we, we have. Why? It's because, I don't know, we don't talk too much, we just do. You will see Israeli startups, they come up with an idea, they go stealth mode and they come back, surface, with a solution, maybe different than other places where they're more dealing with the presentation, how the logo will be, and if they have the right slogan. Don't waste time for this. Who cares? You mentioned the unicorns as a um, as an important uh, KPI uh, to shoot. <laughs> Okay, as, a, as, a, as an important KPI to show the strength of an ecosystem, and, and truly, um, I agree, never had a, a unicorn, and there's this huge unicorn hunting going on in the world. Do you agree that this is really um, a good benchmark showing the strength of an ecosystem, and this is what we should all aiming for, or it has to do with the um, the startup evaluation. Um, you know, we, we know that globally startups are very overpriced. Um, so, you know, <clears throat> is this really the good benchmark showing the strength? It's the best benchmark because all startups dream. Yeah. All startups dream to be rich. And as richer as they can, they read the stories or in Israel, it's a kind of a daily basis. You see a new, another exit, another exit. I just mentioned the unicorns, but we have those who are um, acquired by hundreds of millions or tens of millions. No one acquires a, um, a startup for six million. That's, that's not even a number. Our VCs, to become a VC, you need a minimum of 75 million to, to say I'm a VC, okay? So just understand the numbers. And we are staying inside for that matter. How big do you think the high tech and startup ecosystem of Israel? Okay, we're 10 million, but it's not 10 million of these startups. The entire ecosystem, the numbers I have mentioned, were achieved by 350,000 people. That's the entire ecosystem for high tech and startups. Can you imagine? Can you imagine being Chinese in your size or Indian and listening to me speak? That they want to kill me or, or hug me or, or break into me or just uh, what's the secret? How do you do it? Well, you want to live my life? Come just live in a state of war. Um, wake up in the morning to the sound of sirens or maybe in three in the morning and rush to a shelter, which you, every house has inside currently now by law. So we build the buildings. So one of the rooms in your apartment will be a shelter with a, with a, a steel door 
and still windows and everything. You want to grow this way, fine. You want to see your kids shouting, running out on the table? Come, come to Israel. It's a great place to be. Um, and still, when you walk around, you will not see soldiers or, or, or police. Why? Because we have public technology taking care of, of all this. So yes, we know, like, okay, so I'm 52, okay? I served the Navy for many years, um, and I still do reserve. So 30 days a year, I disappear somewhere, which is great for me. No one can reach me. My, my phone cannot be, we cannot bring the phones. It's closed, so you kind of surface every few hours, just check messages and that's it. Um, okay, this is, yes, part of, of who we are in a way, but still, do you, are you, are you ready to live such a life where everything is about sense of urgency? We don't know tomorrow. We're not 100% what will happen, but so we, we live very much the today. And what I have did as an 18 year old recruit, of course I will not do today. I have much more responsibility today. So I will not jump on live grenades. Same are startups. Startups are young. Well, in our case, they're really young in age. In your case, maybe in thought or in maturity in a way, not to offend anyone. I'm saying startups are young, period. Well, the dream of young people is either, I think, to become famous and become rich. So it's kind of really helping them. But you don't need to motivate because we have a secret sauce. It's called the Jewish mother. And the only difference between a Jewish mother and a Rottweiler is that the Rottweiler lets go sometimes. The Jewish mother relentlessly <laughs> pushes you to be, for, for years it was to be, um, you know how a Jewish mother presents the kid. That's, that's I don't know, Tali is four, he's going to be a doctor. That's the, his brother, he's six, he's going to be a lawyer. That was the Jewish mother's dream. Now she wants him or her to have a startup. And when they don't, she kind of, I don't know, she's angry. She says, what's wrong with you? I mean, the next door neighbor has a startup. What, what don't you have a one? Where maybe here, if you go home and say to your parents, hey, I have this amazing idea for a startup, they will say, startup, smartup, get a real job. Because what is a startup equals a bum, homeless? What is a startup? It's 96% Failure, okay, 67, 97, 96, 94, who cares? Go to Alliance Den, your chances to stay alive are bigger than a startup, which 96% is that he will shut down first year of operation because everything goes against him. Everyone is more clever than him. Everyone has solved this problem a hundred times. He is broke, has a cent to his name. Still, he needs to wake up in the morning and with everything on top of him, work, commitment, I don't know, family, rent, whatever, come up with a technology. And this is why we go in way of the technology before anything else. A startup is first of all people. Next time you ask a startup, it's people and then technology. No technology without the people. People need to be educated. Education is also a part of entrepreneurship, so much so that, of course, all universities and all colleges in Israel, first of all, have their own acceleration programs. All universities right now have commercialization companies, LTD, fully owned by the university. Their job is simple, to look for the researchers' work on the shelf, take off the dust, or deal with the startups in a way that they will open companies on the outside. They will raise the money. They will have joint, by the way, the, um, the students in Israel, when they sign for the university, they also sign that in case that during their studies, their project will be turned into a startup. First of all, the university has ownership on the IP and the professor, part of the, of the research, let's say. They own part of it. And of course, the majority, which is 60 or 70 percent, in some cases, not more than that, is owned by the student, by the entrepreneur. But he gets a lot of help. First of all, he studies this. I'm saying this because currently you get a diploma of, uh, I don't know, a mechanical engineer and entrepreneurship. It's, it's a, almost a requirement. So in the competition between the academic institutions, they need to show that they can also offer entrepreneurship studies and preferably an accelerator where you get to practice. Then we learn 
that first and second year students, they just don't have the time, the capacity. So we said, hey, you're not invited. Three and four. To the three and four, we said in the beginning, okay, come up with your ideas. But then we learned that to do your project for the diploma and the start is impossible. So we choose the good projects, which will become also startups. So I started this in 2013, in many things in Israel, as, as was um, told by Nora, I'm like the beginning of time. Also this understanding, this maturity process of understanding how an academic accelerator should work. For instance, I thought it was a great idea to have the students and alumni. And then I learned alumni, you should restrict to a certain uh, time. The university really liked it because the alumni is coming back started to take night courses and bring money because they had to they pay for the program where the students get it for free the alumni is paid to come because they had graduated but then i thought it was a great idea to get some of the university staff on board but then i learned like in the israeli army that you cannot uh, uh, rub shoulders when your professor is a startup by two hours of the day and then he needs to lecture to you this distance thing is kind of not good for them so we took them out, we took the staff out, and we made a program just for the staff, for them to be together, and the students and alumni are separate. No one taught us this. We didn't know to copy it from anyone. We did it. And again, it runs like a stuff like our government will invest like any other investor. Our government will look for an ROI. So you understand from the 82 billion, government takes about 30% taxes. This is the money coming back to the ecosystem. 4.5% of GDP, which is currently three, 300 billion or something. You know, India's 0. 0.00001 is what their government gives to the ecosystem. And they bring me to tell their government, Modi G himself, mm. how we do it different. But it, it will not help. It starts with people. It starts with people. It's because probably, in this event, and I've seen such event in Europe, this event will end, we will have a networking, I will stand outside, no one will reach out to me. You will speak between yourselves, you will laugh between yourselves because you haven't seen yourself for five minutes instead of reaching out. And this is major. You wanna succeed, no one is obligated to give it to you on a silver platter. You wanna get it, you take it the hard way. The hard way means get out of your comfort zone. Enough, startups are exactly not your comfort zone. And I'm saying this all over the world. Startups are not for everyone. Doesn't mean if you don't have one, except in Israel, you're a loser. No, it's not. But give yourself a chance to try it out. The way that our ecosystem works is that it doesn't wait for things to happen. We have an angel law. An angel law very simply says, that if I have invested in a startup, I get tax benefit to say it in short. Why? Because the government said, enough, I'm not the only one feeding this industry. I want the private sector to come in. Private sector said, okay, why should I? Why should I go for? So they said, okay, well, how did you think that happened? The startup ecosystem stood on hind, hind legs, knocked the door, broke the door, flipped the table and said to the government, enough. We need more. By the way, Israelis, we are number one on complaining. So don't, don't think you, you can take this from us. Yeah, please. Uh, 10, 20 years ago, very few startups uh, exist. What do you think that uh, 20, 30 years later, how will you see the startup age? Will it be a startup age and we will overcome? Uh, of this period, and uh, we will see this, that was a very strange, uh, exciting days. But by today, it, it doesn't work, and we are over. Thank you for the question. I think the only thing that evolved is the name startup, but it was there from the beginning. I mean, we all know Thomas Edison, we all know that JP Morgan was an investor, we all know Tesla. Some of you drive it maybe, but we know Westinghouse. We know Galileo Galilei. We know Michelangelo. They all needed investors. So, so they- um, That um, was not a, a that deep cultural effect on the economy as it is currently the startup ecosystems had on the economy. And I will say why. Um, 
my daughter, when she sees something new and she doesn't go, hey, dad, that's new. She says, hey, dad, that's a startup. Okay, so first of all, this comes into the terminology. That's the one. Second of all, startups, now a new name to a business, which is about technology. So for that matter, our innovation authority will invest or will allow a startup to join an incubator by the government looking for two things, innovation and technology. Now, I'm not dipping into what is what. We, we all kind of understand what is innovation. It doesn't need to be new, not like never seen before. It could be something that we have right now, just innovated in a way. So innovation and technology, meaning if I have a business that's kind of prints uh, logos on shirts that's not technology but if the fibers have wi-fi then certainly i am innovative and i am technology so these two things are major a new thing that happened lately is that the government says not enough i want you as the startup applying to participate also show me that you have business and marketing skills which are taught in university and then taught in, in real life. I don't think this startup thing is going to disappear. Same as I don't think being an accelerator guru. So I don't know if you know, I have established 17 accelerators today. As a private person, as an individual, no one opened. You see, I don't have hair. I've done 68 cohorts of crazy. I have 100 entrepreneurs in every given minute. How, where are you? This will not change. Why? Because it's already deep inside the culture. It is deep in the understanding that startups are a growth engine. Startups, different than companies that push out. Startups invite. Startups take in. When you don't have the money, you cannot adopt a different economy that you need around you. Problem is, ask startups here, how is it to find investors? What is an investor in Hungary? How much? Does it have a number? Can I give you 5,000 euros and call myself an investor? Maybe yes. In Israel, it would not be even funny to, to say something like this. Why would a startup need money? Why teach stuff? This business thing, the kind of common question I get, what is the difference between a startup and a small business? It's a small business in the beginning. It's one or two people with an idea. Why is it called a startup? Different than something else called of small business. And for that matter, we'll go to the small and medium businesses agency asking for help. We say it's technology. That's the main difference. But I want to offer you another explanation. I think that small businesses start with someone who worked for a period of time in the industry where he opens his own business. So I work for, let's say, a hairdresser. I just work there. Then I open my own salon. It's a small business. I, had a, I was a, a salesperson in a, in a clothes shop, and then I became the owner of Zara, for instance. Different than a startup. Why? How do I know? Why would startup need to do a market research? Because they don't know the market. Why would they need to go to validate the problem? Because they don't live the problem. They heard about it, most cases, and kind of come up with a solution. Their ability is to come up with an innovative solution and hopefully develop it. This is why startups are very bad in management and business. Very different than a small business that he doesn't need to do a market. So he comes from within the industry. He knows the work very well. He used to be a waiter. Now he has a restaurant. He doesn't have a beauty salon. He goes there. Different than startups that have no idea about what's going on around them, but of brilliant people on the ability, A, to sell you a dream. And let's face it, I mean, why do startups have to sell in the beginning? A dream, wishful thinking, lots of promises to whom? Investors, gamblers. Why would you think giving the money to a 25 or 30 years old person that didn't do anything for his name makes sense to you? I don't know. I do it, so I don't know even to explain for myself. But in every given minute, I have my own start, I run my own accelerators, and I'm an angel investor. Lucky for me, I get to invest in what I grow in my program since I have so many of them. Some of my programs operate in Europe. Like from here, I will go to Lithuania. 
for a program which runs under the uh, Innovation Authority Government of Lithuania with Vilnius University. Same as we have one in Kaunas, okay? And I'm coming here, I just did a two and a half day stop in Israel from Azerbaijan. Similar population, I mean, Lithuania, you know, three million, it's like a neighborhood, but Azerbaijan, same size, lives very well on gas and oil, very rich on gas and oil, but their decision is that the uh, uh, sea is gonna dry and they want to move to technology. Culturally, a big leap. Technology, a big leap. Starting with education. Everything starts with education, which is why my program currently, and I'm the chairman of the board for that program, is under finance and under the Ministry of Education. Uh, universities are the main manufacturers of manpower worldwide. Problem is that the universities and industry don't talk. This one is saying to this one, first of all, did you ever reach a professor and tell him, listen, I need you to teach this. Who the hell are you? You're gonna tell me, I need my, my, my academic freedom. I will teach what I need to teach. No, you don't, why? Because if right now what you're teaching is programmers that they will do C sharp, dot net, whatnot, instead of Python for cyber, you're wasting time. Those people are going to be unemployed very quick when those you're going to lack and going to say, you know, we need to outsource. This is when they don't talk. What happens in Israel? Those industrial companies, those IBMs, Intels, they open their own academy. All of a sudden, you have an IBM academy. Why? Why do you think they're going to make money on it? No, they said enough. I, I hear you. Don't need you. I will solve it myself. This uh, dialogue is so important. This is why part of my academic accelerators, which I, I open, established three of them, have a panel where the industry comes here. The audience is much bigger auditorium, yes. Uh, uh, students and professors, they benchmark, they pitch to the audience, they leave the room. Then the audience is asked to submit an idea. I take the idea, I go back to the industry and say, hey, this is what I have. Which one do you like? Once they say this one, we call the team. The agreement is very simple. The students, while working on the project, gets a small salary, securing his job, by the way, by doing so. The, the industry get, pays the student, but also enjoy the professor on board. In the middle, there is IP to be registered. And this is how we grow very interesting projects in cooperation. Does it work too much? Well, in some cases, I would like you to see more, but just to say this dialogue, I think is crucial. Uh, did I answer some, uh, any, any way? Oh, that's it. Part of it. Mm -hmm. I will try the other one. I think that we are sitting on a, on a funding plot. What now? On a funding portion. Okay. Uh, uh, excess fundings funding. And, uh, uh, which comes from partially from the growth, partially from the uh, stock market, partially from the bitcoins and all this stuff. And there is a much more available fund which can be used for uh, uh, high risk investments. Okay. And I think this is a two side of the coin that there is a uh, surplus funding on globally available and it finds a uh, on an area that it can use. It's a high risk investment. My thing is this funding issue, in my, in my opinion, doesn't do good for the ecosystem because then you kind of help the startup think that they must get or be funded all the time and just, okay, when you have the money, you have, I have a great idea for you. I think funding, especially in the beginning, well, I want to see and uh, what, what, what I invest in. I don't wait for the CEO or the founder to come to me and say, listen, Tal, I, I have a great idea. I know how I'm going to develop it, but I just need your money. What? Me? Why my money? Why can't you glue together with your charisma a one person that will do part of the way? You need my money? You're not going to get it. Just not. Because this is how there is such an abundance of good people that if I say to him, no, Probably an hour later, I get a better idea and say, oh, I shouldn't put my money there. So this is the one when you have such an abundance. But second, culturally, 
I think it's the responsibility. And the word here is responsibility. Do you take responsibility? Because it looks, some of you are near my age, which I expect you to be either an investor sitting in a room or you have your own startup, or maybe you mentor one. Do you mentor startups? Do you feel the sense of responsibility that two words from you kill scars a startup for life? I don't know if people understand this responsibility talking to startups. Yes, they are a delicate animal, very delicate, crazy people. You don't have crazy because what I said, because everything is so hard and, and, and working in a startup is so tough. I mean, you leave the money and depress you every hour. You don't even get to live it once a week. That's your life. And to handle it, it's, a, it's not for everyone. Why should I need to push them also and, and kind of wipe their chin and tell them how good they are on a daily basis where I expect them to be tough. I want them to make sure that my money is well handled. What am I giving them? So before that, I want to give them advice. I want to see them operate on my advice or whatever advice they come up with. We, we again, and I'm saying this in Israel mainly, but I think it should be like this all over the world. We can work on KPIs. We can work on deliverables. You say something, you deliver it. You don't, what can we speak about more? Intentions are great. That's not something that you work on. I will do my best. My best, your best is kind of different. We need to work on proof. The proof is technology. Sorry. Sure. Yeah. Just while you're on the subject of mentors, because you mentioned the advice. So um, could you talk a little bit about the culture of mentorship in Israel? And also, um, like, I, I know that there's a, a bit of a less formal culture around it that you can reach out to actually really successful CEOs or, or, um, or founders of startups. It's a more informal environment. Could you maybe go into this? How that care what his position. He can be the prime minister. He can be the head of Intel in Israel. I just call him. I don't need to be introduced or, or excuse myself 900 times from disturbing him. But the Why? Answer, right? Why? Because I think I'm bring, bringing mm -hmm. him a great opportunity. He should be very happy and lucky to think, mm -hmm. hey, I'm talking to, to, to you and you have an amazing idea. And thank you so much. That's need to thank me too much. But the, the understanding is, is that when you're prime minister, He's a startup but for his own name. I mean, the guy did a $400 million exit. Of course he knows what the startup ecosystem is all about. Of course I can reach out to him. Of course I can take selfie uh, pictures with him. You don't do that in Azerbaijan. Better don't try it. Either. <laughs> you don't even get close to the minister because he's surrounded by 100 people and cameras and everything wherever he goes and everyone <gasps> holds their breath when he looks at you. But in Israel, it's, it's, it's very much different because it's like this um, army buddy or whatever buddy and there is no... I mean, this is for you guys. We don't wear this. I mean, we had hot summer, summer, and cooler summer. Why should I need this? Or all this, this politeness, and I'm saying to you what I want, and it's very direct, and I think we like one another, or we don't like one another. But you are not born a mentor. Same as you're not born a, a university professor, or for that matter, a pilot, or, 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 I don't know, a doctor. You need to learn. Where's your mentor school? Let me help you. You don't have one. You have one here. But you don't have one anywhere. By the way, for that matter, we say no mentor school. Where's your investor's school? Oh, school of life. Get out. <laughs> it's, 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 it, it doesn't make sense. You need to learn. Startup at least have an incubator, an accelerator. And for that matter, people ask me, how do I choose the right one for me? Simple. Tell me who runs the program and I will tell you if it's for you or not. Because accelerators um, rely on the manager. It's a one person. This is why when someone asks you if you ever give a price proposal, how much is it? Say a 1 million euros, even if you want to say a 100 euros. Because in, on a 1 million euros, there's a one decision maker that signs on the 1 million. On the 1,000, 10. So think big. Think using more what I say, we're the best. Did you hear it? You don't even budge. You don't even uh, flip. I say to you, we're number one. We lead the. You don't even Google it. I can tell you whatever I want. But the, the, the thought that you are the best at what you do and the way you say it to people, well, first of all, you believe you're the best. It really helps to radiate outside, which is for you people, or you just don't care, 
or you just can't tell it because you're not sure. Enough with this being sure. See how many men are here, where are the women? Why is startup ecosystem worldwide has 6% participation of women? In Israel, it's eight. Now you will not Google it, so nine. <laughs> a lot, a lot. It's, 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 it's ridiculous. Why? Here is 11. What? There is 11. Okay, so we're at 12. So I just want to say, just to say on the topic, why is it? And then you get this simple excuse, well, pregnancy, well, that's, that's not, not it. Women, I'll tell you why. Because you need to be, when you see a, a, a job, a, a, um, a job offer and you go to the prerequisites, if you're not a hundred of a hundred, you're not applying. Men, 20% is enough, 80% we will take along the way. It's that kind of a mindset. Startups are all about failure. And let's face it, we are kind of accustomed as men to get the no, we're less accustomed to that, and which makes it more difficult for you, right? But I want to say that in Israel, by law, by law, a board of any company needs to have women in, in case they have just men or men in case they have just women. We decided that we're going to act on it, right? A second is that our government gives incentive to companies, especially startups, owned by women, meaning at least a third needs to be owned by a woman and then they can apply, only women can apply for such funding. Um. You have in the audience um, uh, startups, many of them are technology-based. We also have, you know, angel investors um, uh, from the Hungarian Angel Association, uh, Ecosystem, the others. Um, so um, what would be your advice um, to startups who think they validated or they actually have validated their technology, um, uh, a product in the market, and would like to expand to your ecosystem, what is the best way to connect with your really mature and advanced ecosystem? I would say, first of all, don't come to us. Don't come to it's us. It's too much for you. I think you should start here because the opportunity are much, much. In, in Israel, the competition is, is impossible. It's not even near impossible. It's impossible for you. Uh, second is that culturally, there's a gap, huge gap. And, and you will find yourself very frustrated from, from trying. I would not say, of course, to the angel investors. I don't know where they are here, but um, angels are, for my eyes, I mean, business people like me. And, of course, we, we, we can and we should uh, work together, syndicate or even uh, jointly invest. makes a lot of sense to have a kind of a mixture. Um, you said, so if you're a startup and you have validated your technology, saying this, I, I, ju I just get tired from just thinking about how long it would take you to validate the problem, validate the solution, make up a team, develop an MVP, go to a first adopter, deploy, get a feedback, I don't know, adopt, change, do whatever, and then get someone to pay. That's, that's long, okay? But if you reach this point, first of all, it says something about you. Second of all, I would assume that if you're in this stage, you have developed something that for sure your near ecosystem needs before coming to Israel, which is again, inside of population, not that big, but you will find, let's say a more open ear or more attention if you have good technologies. That said, angel investors, we all know that we like to invest a bike ride away from the office. So to bring money of private people to a remote or let's say, out of the country startup is not done. Uh, this is why we are part of the US. It really helps us to get yeah, their money. Uh, VCs, you will find in Israel VCs, which kind of go from the micro ones that will give you those small checks that you want. I would say in the neighborhood of 250 to 300 and up, we have already such VCs. We never had them before, but in the last, I would say five years, we see more of those, a one. And then up to the big ones who will give you those round uh, uh, seed rounds, which goes to 5 million, round A, which goes to 10 million and beyond. Uh, you will get easy, let's say, a 1 million for about 10% of your company. That's kind of the, the, the common practice in Israel for VCs. Then you have the CBCs, the cooperate VCs. 
which is very interesting for you because if you're developing the technology relevant for IBM or Intel, it makes sense that they will be your, your, your first investors. M12 of Microsoft does it a lot in Israel. Okay, So they will invest not a one, but a six million. Easy, just to begin with, on an early stage. Okay, This is the maturity that you wish for yourself, but this was managed, this was grown, first of all, over years. We are not doing this from last year. We've been doing this for decades. Give yourself time, but have a goal, have a target. Put yourself in KPIs, work together. <laughs> Companies compete, startups unite. That's the slogan. If this ecosystem does not come together, you are going somewhere. By the way, I'm saying this always to ecosystem. Startups will always find a way. This, the resourceful people, smart, amazing people, they will find a way. Most of them will die along the way, but those who will, will make it. These are the ones that you want, of course. Invest a lot in education. Education is not that just to teach the entrepreneurship, it's just to try and move this mindset. What is a startup? What are startup people? What do they need? What feeds them? What do they need in the way of help? What can they bring back? Community. Community is so essential for startups on, on a level of national level. By the way, don't wait for anyone to do it. Just open yourself a WhatsApp group like I have in the many countries I operate. I operate in about 30 countries. I opened the WhatsApp group for the ecosystem. By the way, most of them are very silent ones because they're all like this reserved. And I see over three, now I can tell you over three, the, the, the oldest I have is four years. They have gone through a change. They see the change. I don't need to show it to them. Yeah. So uh, I was wondering, like, what is the level of, like, uh, investors in different regions, different countries, uh, require different levels of control in startups? Of, of control. Control. In startups. Yes. Yeah. And what do you, where do you see is, is a good level of control, not to kill the creativity of the startups, but mm -hmm. still have some like idea what they're yeah. doing with your investment? Mm -hmm. And how does that work in Israel? It's a and crucial question in a way. And even if I would tell you how Israel works, it will not come to show anywhere here because it's on the individual person, whatever his history is, what he comes with. But when you as a startup reach an investor, your understanding as a startup is that um, we're the smartest. I'm going to show this person uh, the technology. Of course, he understands very quick. And I'm going to get invested. No, it doesn't work this way. Now, just give it to you. Let's say I come to you with a proposal. I have an, a startup. You listen to me and you say, first of all, the person speaking to me makes a lot of sense. I like him. You have such like, like you like me right now. So this is a knowledgeable person. I will definitely do business with him. Good. Then you listen to the technology and you say, well, I'm not a 99%, not technological people, they're business people. So they would say, listen, but I heard about it. Like I know, like, I don't know, crypto, cyber is a big word. Okay. I like it. I don't know exactly what it does, but I like it. Then you tell him, listen, I want you to give me just as a 10,000 euros. So for him, the 10,000 is like a hundred for you. Better be a 10, a 10 for you, not big money. And then you say to yourself as a startup, it takes you so long. You like me. You, 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 you trust me. And it's small money for you. And the investment doesn't come. What startups don't take to consideration is that in the end, it's the business of people. They're speaking to people. What is this level of trust, which is more to say, I trust you, that a person needs to invest in you, to become an investor. And then would be the level of is involvement. So if what you're raising from me is 1 million and I have 500,000 uh, in the bank, sorry, I have a million, you want a million, okay? But I have in the bank is a million and a half. I'm giving you the majority of my money. How much control would you assume I will have? I will be here. I will not let go. Don't take the money. It's not for you. So you understand, if you want a million, take someone that is this million is like 10 euros for you. This is a person who will say to you, first of all, I got you. Then he will say to you, I did not come on board to run the company. No investor wants to run the company. Not because of anything. He doesn't want to. He wants you to run the company. Why can you show his credentials to run a company? Can you manage a one million? What's your credentials? 
What was the last budget that you had? Aside from the birthday, when everyone brought you some money, what was the budget that you ran exactly? Your salary? Do you know how to run a million? Do you have technology knowledge to run an R&D project? And you're asking me for the million. Where is it going? I know that you have a C CTO. Come on, a CTO. Someone who knows to do weeks. I don't know. CTO. <laughs> on the weekends. What's your engagement with the person exactly? What happens if tomorrow morning he goes and says, I'm taking the cold with me? Where's my money? You will look at me and say, oh, you know, I did my best. Well, your best is not enough. When I'm giving you my money, what do you give me back? I will give you equity. I don't care for your equity. It's not even worth the paper that you write it on. My money gives you the value. Before that, you had nothing. Understand the mindset. You speak to investors, you think investors think like you. Well, I gave my blood, my sweat. I was cheering. I did. I don't care. I just bought a chair. This is what I bought for me, for my money. It's an asset. I sit with my friends, you know, with all these cigar and the scarves on the yacht. And I tell them, well, oh, by the way, you're, you're a by the way in the conversation. I invested in this um, startup. What do they, what's the name? I don't remember. Okay, what do they do? Something in cyber. What do you think is it? What, it he's a person like you. His wife tells him on the way back to bring milk and eggs. I mean, he's run by someone. <laughs> That's an investor. So can I tell you what's the level of control that you will like? It's, it's what you show him. If you show him that you can run the show, when you answer before he asks, well, you build a level of credibility. What happens the first time when you don't meet a milestone? Oh, my God. This is what you should ask yourself. You know, when you do this, when you get married, you need to think about the divorce. Same here. This is why you have a term sheet. This is why you sign an agreement. This is why probably most of you that have started never signed a founder's agreement. Hopefully you did. Because you don't want to think about the day after. But this day is evident to come. Also, your disagreement with your investor. Also, the, 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 the second round where he looks at you and says, okay, how much do you need? 150, great. Why did you give me in shares 15%? I have the money already. Where's yours? And you get diluted. It's not an art too much. It's not something that you cannot learn. It's something that you need to practice. And what startups are great in is knowing this, but doing absolutely nothing about it. It's like everything is served to you by, I don't know, probably this accelerator is serving you all the knowledge, but you can't, but you like to have it. You would like to have all the perks. You would like to know all the big names are here. All the big professors are here. But you're not using any of it. And they keep on giving you because they feel this is what they need to do. And just to trust you that you know what to do with it. And then comes the investor and says, oh, my God, in all this mess, now I need to live here and manage all this. Think about the investor. I hope you have a panel where I would, I would suggest to have the different kind of investment channels that you can have sitting here and talk to you openly and say, I can say as an angel, how do I invest? I can tell you as a VC what I look for. It's, it's, it's quite organized. It's not something that we invent, but, but it's personal to me. You should know it. And you should know when you speak to an investor what his interest, what's his angle, what makes him tick. You don't just call him and say, hi, I need your money. You will never do that. And you don't fi find it problematic to present half hour and say, I need half a million euros from you. Go say to your parents, you know, they give you half a million. Or to your friends for that matter. When your only market survey was to ask the family, do you think I'm smart? Even your mom will say. <laughs> I, I have a question about the role of the government because uh, you say that most of this is coming from the grassroots, but you many times also mentioned the, the role of the, uh, the government uh, in Israel. And before we came here, you also mentioned that it was a decision by the government like uh, many decades ago that they would support technology and yes. innovation and startups. So if the mindset uh, on policy level is different, then, you know, how do we get there? So, But a quick one-minute answer, please, because we're running out of time. Yeah. So just let's, <laughs> let's wrap it up as well. <laughs> uh, I will just say simply that um, our government is somewhat different than, than yours. And, uh, <laughs> the current one or all of them? 
right? <laughs> don't, don't be mistaken. We share the same problems. Don't think that although we are the chosen people, we are same like, <laughs> like anyone else, really. Uh, we have the corruption, we have the problems, we have we have everything that you have, but um, we don't we don't care too much for this. We, we just we just do really. This is what we do. We do. We don't wait for anything to happen. Yes, our government did be involved, but I told you, if your government is involved in a way that it trusts the ecosystem as any investor to make money for itself, then you got the answer. This is why the gov our government is involved. He knows he gets a lot of money if this works, and they're very happy to, to say it. Second, well, you know, is we're reminded that we're Israeli, meaning that a third of the world doesn't like us, another third boycotts us, but knows what. So we have a very small portion of the world, and what you can say to everyone, okay, maybe you don't like me, but I have great technology, well, that's kind of a door opener. This puts you like everyone else. We don't need to be in the G12, G8, G12, we are on G, okay, we are G. <laughs> and, and then you come, and, and you see that, you, you come to us, you come to cooperate with us, you come to buy our smarts, our knowledge, and it works for us as, as people and it works for the government. But we share all the problems that you can imagine are there. We are just different as people. We don't wait for things to happen, we make them happen. We complain all the time. This is who we are, and it works for us in the end. I mean, you see the results. Well, we need to wrap it up this part of the um, uh, uh, program sure. and let you have um, your yeah. network uh, fill up your hangar. Yeah, and no one system will reach out to me anyway. Yeah. 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 So let's yeah. show yeah. that yeah. Um, nah, you know, you, we have all the ideas. Them, and, yes. um, and so we will have the networking part starting now. Thank you so much for the exciting uh, uh, conversation. And I'm sure there will be many who will want to have discussion with you one-on-one. -on -one. And let's start um, uh, the hangar and ecosystem WhatsApp group. This is so definitely can... something that we, we want yeah. to do. Um, I need to say thanks because also I'm here because of Fuzzy. I don't know if you know Fuzzy, uh, the open innovation platform, uh, which connects uh, startups and investors in a way, connects home ecosystems, starting with ideas, then towards the startup themselves, the opportunities, the investment. So people are here. Christine is here. We're shy. <laughs> You're also here. It's a slow moment. Okay, so we are all here. So you have positive team, and you're of course very invited to um to connect. I would like just one thing I need to do always. I need to make a selfie. Wait, now the selfie <laughs> oh, yeah, I will yeah, stand. Yeah, wait, I will stand here and do it this way. The picture is not the selfie I'm taking, but the selfie he will take of me taking. Okay, that's the important <laughs> thing. Don't look yeah, so much just, into my. Just team. one sentence that, uh, as you know, this event was was uh, co-organized uh, between Cozy uh, and the iLab. So also on behalf of the of uh, of the iLab, I would like to thank you for this opportunity for bringing us uh, uh, Tad, and it was great cooperating with you. And we hope to continue this in yeah, the very future. Will. We are very open to collaborate um, with also you. with Sarah and with the startup. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Don't be angry. And thank you all for participating. If you're not in the picture, but this is the big picture, so we will take all of you. Okay, don't 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 worry. Yes. Not the ones you're probably. But yes. Can you get also this? Yeah, we'll still look closer. So, okay, so I'm doing this. However you like it. I mean, again, where are you? You're here. So okay, like this. Oh, they're smiling, I don't see. <laughs> yeah, we all smile behind our masks. Perfect. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm a problem. <laughs>